Good morning. This is Chris from Artistic Artifacts. Um, we're working with, this weekend, it's our C team <laughs> um, and the filming. So uh, Kyle is still in Italy with his mom and um, he's doing some filming over there and Caitlin uh, got the, day, uh, the Saturday off. So Jen, Jen's behind the camera this morning. So a couple of housekeeping. I will um, answer questions and post links after the video. So um, there won't be links posted while we're going on um, because we can only manage a couple things at a time. Um, to get it out of the way very quickly, my vest is one of our Indian vests and um, it is sold out, but we do have some same style um, in some beautiful uh, block printed indigo fabric. So those are online and in the store. Uh, the other is my scarf, is made with these new fat quarter bundles. It's a really gauzy um, batik hand dyed from India as well. And today for our, our local is our into bolt sale. So it's 40% off if you finish the bolt um, and 25% off all our pre-cuts that are in the store and our curated bundles. And for our online customers, the 25% off is all our curated bundles. And those are bundles that we've made with current collections. Um, we've just coordinated them and we have them in, some are in fat quarter, some are in half yard. So make sure you go on the website and look at those. Any questions or anything before I get started? Probably one more thing. The quilt behind me, we do have a kit. Um, it's using a pattern from the Roll with the Classics. So it's made with, this one's made with Liberty Fabrics, but you could make it with any um, design roll and using the triangle ruler. But it's Jean, uh, Jean Ann's um, Roll with the Classics. Okay. Oh, Judy's on from Italy. Oh, good morning, Judy. We're hanging in there this morning. So today we're going to talk about Sashiko, and I've talked about this before. Um, Sharon and I found a couple videos on our YouTube. I've talked about it in Let's Talk About Hand Stitching, and I also had a Sashiko video from years ago when our, one of our creative quests. Um, I'm not here to teach you about Sashiko. I am not teacher. I'm not a pro at this. I want to inspire you to try it. And that's really what I'm here to talk about today. Um, and how I got to what I'm doing now versus what I was doing when I was using these pre-printed cloths, which we sell. Um, and they are, I will continue to use these cloths because I find them very calming, very meditative. Um, very easy to use because what you're what you're working on is a piece of fabric that has the design on it so it really gives you where you put your stitches we have them in an overall design like this we've got um, sashiko patterns where these are some traditional <clears throat> traditional patterns uh, <clears throat> and incorporating traditional styles. When you're using the cloth, you, you do cut off this. Some people say you might keep the back on to give it a little bit of weight. I don't, but it's uh, truly a preference. And we have the traditional blue and white ones. And then we also have some from Lysine that are um, in some gorgeous colors. Again, great way to get started. Um, the stitch is already there, so you're just doing the stitching. And what is Sashiko versus Cantha stitch, which my vest is, versus a Boro stitch? They are all the same stitch. They're all a running stitch. It's all a straight stitch. Um, Sashiko is really looking at using traditional patterns, geometric shapes, Whereas this, this is more of a borrow where you're layering and just doing straight stitches with no pattern at all. And the Cantha is a utility stitch or big stitch that they use, but all of them have been used to layer fabrics and hold them together. 
So it's not a mystery, it's an easy process. The, the patterns just give you a way to go, but you could also just, this is just a, a modern rice patch um, that I've just done some Boro patching with some of our Japanese textiles. Um, so where, why did I go from doing these to making my own, um, designing or marking my own fabric? Um, well, we got two books in the shop and I took them home to review them. And um, both of them inspired me. So the Ultimate Sashiko source book they're both by um, Susan Briscoe, who's just studied in um, Japan for a year. And they give you the history. She gives you some of the techniques, some of the grids, how to, how to do the grids. I'm trying not to get the glare on Yeah, this well, how's that? Does Her, that work better? better? How to do the stitches, a little bit of, you know, the, the do's and don'ts. But as almost anything I do, I, you know, I read the rules and then I kind of do my own thing. But I, what I liked about this was that she had some simple projects to start with. So she's got some, how do you just do a square and put it in a trifold card. So I ordered some trifold cards off of a shop on Etsy. And that's kind of where I started is to make some patterns. But she also has other patterns and suggestions. And for each project, she has like a mini project as to how to do it. So this was kind of the first one that I decided to do was uh, the bag. And what I did was I took, again, I, I'm not using a sashiko cloth. This was actually some uh, indigo dyed fabric that I had, and I marked the pattern, did my stitching, and then she's got the instructions on how to put the bag together. I actually had some yarn that went in an indigo bath a couple years ago, and then she also shows you how to make these nice little tags on it. And then I used some of our Indian fabric on the inside. So marking that was the first thing that I had to learn to do. And so I was like, okay, what, what tool am I gonna use to mark? And I've tried several different ones. The one that I actually liked for, for the, using this was this triangle Taylor's chalk. And I happen to have these Sue Spargo Circle Easy templates see if I could do this upside down. So what I did was I put the template down. Let's see, I need something darker under there, don't I? I put the template down and I marked it. And the chalk will, will come off. What I did learn was don't iron it. And so then when I went to do the next one, I lined up these marks on the on the template so the half mark is there and then the half mark is there and I did the next circle. So that was where I began. Um, I could do the whole thing but that's where I began to, to do this bag. So that was kind of my first foray. Then the next one I did was I saw this fa uh, sticky fabric salvi. Somebody had asked me about it before, and I didn't know that we had it. Lo and behold, we do. It's actually a sheet that you can feed through your printer. So you can trace a design, or you can copy a design, print, and then uh, print it on, through your printer. What I did for this one though, was I actually traced the designs out of the book. So the paper was thin enough that I could actually 
lay it over a pattern in the book. If I could find one, I know they're here. Believe me, trust me, but I was able to lay it over and actually trace the design. Once you stitch it, so this is stitched. I didn't, uh, here's a traced one. You what you do is you take the, uh, the backing off. It's not going to cooperate, but you take the backing off. You stick it on the fabric. You stitch the fabric. You run it on their cold water for one or two minutes, and you end up like this. The first one, I actually put some felt on the back, but what I found was that uh, the Solvi is enough of a stabilizer, and when I had the felt on the back, I really was having trouble doing the stitches. And even then, with the stabilizer and with the sticky, Instead of doing the running stitch, I was doing a, what's truly a sashiko stitch is a stab stitch. So I was doing one stitch at a time on this. But these will then go into one of these cards. They could go in a card, they could go as a patch on something. Um, this one was a little bit small, but you could actually make coasters out of them. So there's there's a lot of options. In the same time I was experimenting with the prod products, I was experimenting with fabrics. So these fabrics are shot cottons. Um, some are the peppered shot cottons, and I think there's some of Kate's. What I really found I liked was the light uh, Indian cotton that we have, the hand dyed Indian cotton. I think this was really a nice texture to work on. But this was a regular cotton. Um, this is an Essex. Um, I mean, I said this was, I don't even know where the fabric came from. It was just a um, something that went in our indigo dye when we had an indigo dye day here. How do those uh, compare to traditional Sashiko cloth weight? Uh, this one is pretty close to it, but I would say actually these um, these shot cottons are pre are traditional. I mean they're they're that weight. I mean you can see they're, but when you re read the books, they suggest uh, a, a range of fabrics. Um, I mean you could actually do it. I did one and I just used the wrong color thread, but I did one on a um, pieced block that I had, a log cabin pieced block, and I did one of the designs on it. It didn't show up because I chose the wrong color thread, um, but that was regular quilter's cotton. So it really doesn't make any difference. Um, actually, I'll show you another project I'm working on is this is my jeans uh, shirt from Sacred Threads. So um, I was like, oh, why don't I embellish that? And this this worked really nicely. It's it's obviously got some sort of, it doesn't wrinkle. It's got some sort of, it doesn't, let's see. I know it's 100% cotton. This was a joy to, uh, to stitch on. And for this, I marked just using my quilting ruler and um, the clover rolling. And I'll show you how to use that in just a minute. But that worked really well with just a regular quilting ruler. Yes, Max, we save these uh, videos both on um, Facebook and then they are posted on our YouTube channel for watching later from the beginning. Thank you for asking. So after I made this little bag, then, you know me, I'm into rice bags, and I had this piece of sashiko on a, I'm not sashiko, cyanotype on um, Osnaberg. Just, it's World Cyanotype Day, so how appropriate. <laughs> and we do have the, the kits in the, in the store. Um, 
But I had that piece and I didn't know what, what I wanted to do with it. Well, I like the circles. So I like the circle motif. This is the seven treasures pattern. So it's a traditional sashiko pattern. And again, I used my um, Sus Margo template to mark, uh, to mark the circles. And then I kind of randomly did them. I got to about this far. Um, and then I thought, oh, I just need to add a little more. Add a little more. Did a little cross stitch and then put, made my bag. But it's showing you how you can take these traditional patterns and do what you want with them. Um, uh, it really is allowing me to go a little bit further. I put a, I put a um, stabilizer in there, a, a midway Pellon iron-on stabilizer. And it gave me, I'm not sure whether I, I think I did. I think I uh, ironed it on before I stitched. But again, I, I, I have a very light stitch, so it's very easy for me to stitch on a, a thin piece of fabric without. Do you use on the bottom as well? Um, I did on the outside bottom, the stabilizer, so that it sits flat. Okay. And then inside, I use some of our indigo cotton. From um, it's an, We've got it by the bolt. I would highly recommend, in fact, not even highly recommend, insist that you wash it multiple times before you use it. Ask me how I know. Um, so this bag will only contain things that are dark and won't show the indigo that will, <laughs> will, will leak off of it. All right, a couple different techniques. Uh, but before I do that is, some of the inspiration is, you know, there's things that you can go back and look at. I have this book, God only knows how old it is. I don't even know if it has a date on it. But it's, it's quilting patterns. So you can get inspiration for your designs um, from something like that. I've had a number of these books, um, Japanese inspiration. I've probably had them for 15, 20 years. Um, in the back of this one, they've got some traditional designs, which were actually meant to be for applique and piecing. But what I hope to do is take like this plum one and print it, uh, co make a copy of it and print it out. Um, and there you can see how, how you can see through the paper to, uh, if you want to trace it, but I, I will actually print this one out and use that on something. So the inspiration can come from lots of designs and there's also lots of people on social media. So if you're interested in Sasha Code, you can find lots of inspiration. And there are, what I also learned is there are two types of patterns. And the, one is the geometric and the motifs which is what kind of these are. And then there are the, it's the denser patterns which are worked on a grid. And so that's what this one is. So you work on a grid, this is probably a half inch and I'll show you how I marked it. Would this be more of a utilitary stitch like for um, mending, do you think? Um, it, it, perfect for mending. And what it does is, um, and I, you can see where they would use these because it gives a really dense fabric. Um, <clears throat> so th this has a piece of flannel on the back of it, but because the stitches are so close and so tight, you really get some density um, and wonderful texture. I mean, if you're into texture, this is awesome. But it could also be, you know, it'd be a fun patch to put on on anything or a patch to put on the, the, the shirt. But there are two different styles. I won't pro uh, even begin to try and um, pronounce them, but that's what the difference is. So another tool that I thought, because you can make the grid using a ruler. So you can use your ruler. It's got half inch marks on it. Or I found a tool I wanted to try. I'd seen this woman on Instagram. 
it, she has this, it's called Miniature Rhino. She's got a grid where you put it down on your fabric and you can mark your lines that way. And you can mark their quarter inch line. So oh, I marked, I was doing something where I was doing one inch or if you can doing a half inch. And then if you've marked that way, you can turn, <clears throat> turn it this way and you can mark. You can mark it that way. And at home, I would be a little more careful and use a, a little better pressure on it. And those lines will be gone when I'm finished stitching, but that's how you kind of get a dense, you know, a dense pattern. And there's a lot of patterns in there that, that use that. But you could also use, like I said, you could use your ruler. Someone says, love this. Looks like a perfect activity for sure. Days of fall and the cooler days of it's winter. It's wonderful. I was thinking the exact same thing. It's very, very meditative, I'm telling you. It's very calming. What do you, uh, what pen are you using to trace your marks? It's this. It's a fine tip roller pen that um, is putting down um, chalk, right? Yep. So there's a little, little tiny roller at the end of the pen, and this is um, filled with chalk, and then we sell refills. I'm sorry, Chris, you didn't ask me, but I knew that they okay. were right there. Yeah. So another way to do it is to use your ruler. Um, I love this disappearing ink pen, but you can only use it if you're kind of doing your project in one evening or in a, in a short amount of time because it does disappear. But that's the nice part of it. What does it disappear? Just um, air? Yes. Okay. So you don't need to iron it. You don't need to wash it out. It just goes away. Um, I marked something last night and there's no, I marked, this piece of fabric and there is no sign that I put any marks on it. Hmm. Um, but you could use this to mark, if you were going to do half inch marks, you could go through, go around the ruler, mark your um, half inch, and then draw your lines with the chalk. But you've got your, your half inch marks there um, to keep your ruler straight. Do you have any um, suggestion of how do you keep your stitches even, same length, when using lines? Um, like that little crosshatch thing. Well, the crosshatch, it was very easy because once I did the first row, then I was just the next uh, row was, I, was in between. But if you look closely, they're not all the same size. They're pretty close. But part of that is because I have been do using the printed cloth for a couple years, my hand, you know, my hand motion, my hand memory has gotten used to. Um, so like this one is so exact that you've practiced so much. Yes that these were all pre-printed and so you didn't have to think yes. too much about it. So these are good, good, a, a really good way to get started. Or the other is we have the stencils, which are the Sashiko stencils. And they have marks on them. So then you would know where your stitches are. So I'm lining it up. And then those marks are there and that's where your stitches are. So that's another way of doing it. Um, there are some pens, um, some marking pens. I don't think I'd use them, um, but this, this is a really nice uh, template to do. And then the, it actually comes with information. It comes with information, yeah. Yeah. 
And another way I did it, I did a grid was using this tool. I used uh, chalk paper. So I put the chalk paper down. And for this one, I actually used using this. I actually used a ballpoint pen. So it had a little bit more pressure on it. So I did the grid through this, and then it came out on here as a grid. And I actually believe that's probably what I used for, for that one. So that's another tool, it's tracing paper. It wasn't my favorite, I don't know that I will use it again, but I it was testing tools and different tools work for different people. And then something new we just got in this week were these um, card decks. And they're by Susan Briscoe, the same person who did the books. So I was like, oh, let me take one of those home and see what I need to do with those. <laughs> so each card, um, when you open the deck, each card, there's one for each stitch. It's also some basic instructions but it's how to make a grid and then how to make your diagonal lines. So for that I cut, I figured out this is would work best in a um, either a six inch or if they're half and she tells you exactly what um, how to use your half inch marks on your grid. So it's one, one, two, I'm counting upside down. One, two, three, four, five, six inches. So I caught a fabric for doing a six inch, and I've got my six inch ruler. I will make my grid, just like I showed you, doing the, my marks, make the grid, and then I can do the stitching. But there's all, all the patterns that are in the source book are here but they're nice easy cards so that you don't have to have the whole book opened and, and whatever to follow the, uh, follow the pattern. Do you Did you find that this was a great um, supplement yes. to her book? Yes. So this goes with this, the book. And both of the books are actually slightly, I mean they're similar, there are some things that are the same, there are some different projects in them. And part of what, it, what really inspired me, so it's like, how do I use these? Well, here's a table runner. Here's a memory book or a scrapbook. And, you know, a needle case. I'm looking for, I mean, pillows. Here's some of the designs that you can trace. This one that I really love. Of course, I'm not going to be able to find it. They seem really traditional. Mm. Oh, this is this was one of the things that really inspired me. It's the wall hanging. So it's a grid with different uh, different fab color fabrics and different patterns. So at the same time that I was looking at this, these silks came in. And I thought, oh, wouldn't they look pretty? And then I had also been working on a quilt with this. Wouldn't that look pretty to add to it? And then, oh my goodness, I've got some shot cotton. So guess what I'll be doing this winter? <laughs> That's my project for the winter. So stay tuned. Um, this is some leftover from the backing of a quilt. Um, but I think I've showed you all, oh, thread. Oh dear. So yes, I've been using the lysine thread. Um, I like the texture. It's a cotton thread that's made in Japan specifically for sashiko. Um, we have some very basic sashiko threads that I saw under here somewhere. So we have just the basic uh, red, white, and blue sashiko threads. Those work perfectly. 
Uh, this piece here was actually stitched with Eleganza 8 weight, um, variegated, so you that's how I got the, the colors in it. So I would say an 8 weight, a 12 weight, but 8 weight is probably the closest to um, these lysine threads. And the lysine come in solids and variegated. And the two types of needles we have are the, the Tulip Sashiko needles and the Hitamari needles. Which ones do you use, Chris? I'm using both of them. There's usually several around. Um, but what you can find is that they thread, um, they all have a big eye, so they thread very easily. And the longer sashiko needles are good when you're doing, you can watch my hand shake here. So here's the sashiko. You're actually moving your fabric instead of your needle. Doing it in and out. And then you pull it through. Someone asked, do you ever use a hoop for larger pieces? And I think you don't usually use a hoop at all, do you? I don't use a hoop, a hoop at all. I never have. Um, as I, I think I said, I've got, I'm very fortunate. I have a good tension. I had good tension when I did needlepoint and stitching. So I find it much harder because you're going in directions. I find it harder with a hoop to have to, to maneuver the, the piece around with the hoop. I even bought a stationary hoop thing, thinking that would work, and it was, I tried it once, and it's like, nope. And I don't use a thimble. A lot of um, people who do sashiko use a thimble, um, but I don't. And I don't have, I mean, I've been doing sashiko for the last two weeks, and my fingers aren't all, <laughs> all stuck with, it, with, it, uh, with uh, the needle sticks. Um, and I think uh, someone else above, um, Martha, asked, um, do you use stabilizer with the pre-printed fabrics? No, I don't. Mm -mm. It also doesn't allow you to manipulate it like you just showed us if you use a stabilizer, right? Um, you know, it, would, it wouldn't. It um, would I mean, I've got a, some of the pieces I've used a stabilizer on um, just be. I just don't. But, you know, if you're using a really soft stabilizer, um, it it shouldn't affect your ability. I mean, this has got a piece of flannel on the back. Um, I use felt sometimes on the back. Um, I often find like this with the flannel, the stitches did go through, but the piece that I used on felt, these stitches went through because I was actually doing a step, more of a stabbing stitch than, than the, the pulling and the, and the running stitch. I think that's about it. Sounds good. You've inspired everyone. All right. Um, all the products, I'll put the link again. They're all under the discussion um, on the event page, but I'll put the link um, actually as long as the store's not busy where we anticipate a busy day. We've got some people uh, coming in to buy machines. It's the last day for the trade-in event, so for the local people, take advantage of this. We had somebody come in yesterday and traded in a very old Singer machine and um, she got the 20% off uh, a, a domestic sewing machine. So yes, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see you for that in the end of bolt sale. Um, we finished lots of bolts, there, but there's still lots of fabric. So come on, um, come on down, we're here till four o'clock today.